The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 10th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we start our day with a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 107. The S&P's up 2. NASDAQ 100 down 36. Russell's up 22. Semi's up 41. Trendy's up 103. So we got a good mixed bag out there. In the metals market, gold's off 4 bucks. Silver's down Four pennies and light sweet crude is up a nickel. Natural gas is up nine cents. A 30 year treasury print out 123.25. That's basically flat out there. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, booking holdings. $73 move, nearly 3%. Monolithic power systems up nearly 20 bucks, nearly 4%. Helen of Troy, nearly 16%, 18 bucks. Broadcom, nearly $18, 2%. Intuit, up 15 bucks. That's a little over a 3% move. To the downside, it's at Mercado Libre. Down 7%, 83 bucks. FMC down 15 bucks. Microsoft off seven. Tesla's down four. Prestige Wealth off 23%. Nothing prestigious about that. That's a four and a half dollar move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So where do we begin? Let's begin. We talked about this just for a tad uh, during the uh, 11 a.m. update, and that tad was, if we take a look at equity futures out here, you've got new profiles. We discussed this on Friday, both in the ES, well, both, I should say, for the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Russell 2000. So let's begin. Let's take a look at it one at a time. The one at a time, we have a new profile that formed within the prior profile that's telling you and I to expect and anticipate a consolidation, not a breakout to the upside, not a breakdown to the downside, but a consolidation. We have a profile that formed within inside a profile. That's its message. Now, I'm not saying that we can't close below the bottom of profile. What I'm sharing with you is a message so far is that we should expect and anticipate a consolidation inside of the S&P 500. Turns out we've got that exact same message inside the NQ. The NQ's new profile forming with inside the prior profile. If you take a look at some of these other profiles here, as the NQ has moved higher, these newer profiles have formed above the prior profile. We've had a higher low, a higher center, a higher top out there. That is not the case when we take a look at the NQ. We've got a caller on the line. We're going to continue speaking about the NQs with John and Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, thanks for taking the call. And can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine, loud and clear. Fire away. If, uh, yeah, if, uh, uh, if the reception goes bad on me, which it uh, has been doing, uh, I'll merely hang up and listen. Okay. But Steve, uh, yeah, thanks for taking the call. Can you tell me, um, I had uh, two questions 
uh, first on the the NQs, and that is uh, what level, if broken, uh, confirms for you a declining trend uh, as uh, uh, differentiated from what's been going on the past couple of months? Great question. So um, let me see. I'm going to try to fire up some of my other charts out here. But as long as I uh, – this is the daily time frame that we're looking at right now. So the first level that I would be paying attention to is going to be 14,969. And 14,969 is the bottom of the daily profile. If we take a look at this chart that we have up on our screen here, not that the bottom of every daily profile has held that support. We do see some chinks or some cracks in the armor in this move higher. But that would be the first level, John. That would be the minimum level that price would need to close below for two consecutive days. And that level, again, is 14,969. Before I switch over to the white background charts, any questions about this chart that you're viewing here in Tiger T? Interesting you should say that, uh, Steve. I'll merely supplement what you have by sharing with you and mention 14969. Uh, yes. You, uh, I recommend penciling in the figure 14870 on that NQ contract. That is the uh, minus one standard deviation level. Yeah. And... Um, uh, that level has held uh, multiple times in the past six, seven, eight weeks. Um, if we break that, the uh, the big options traders and, of course, the zero days to expiration mm -hmm. uh, options market is now huge. So there is an element of tail wagging the dog, uh, the options uh, influencing the larger cash indices. Sure. So just to complement 14,969, 14,870 is okay. another number. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let's move on to the white background charts out here. And on the white background charts, what this communicates to us is a close below. And so, John, I'll use 14,870. A close below 14,870 should then move us down to 14,766 or thereabouts. Now, that number is coming from the uh, weekly chart, and that would be the oscillator and change line level. Now, you know as well as I do that as price moves up and down, that number is going to also change, but that would become a price target, would be the weekly oscillator and change line. If I look at the monthly time frame chart, now that we have these monthly time frame, or, or we have multi time frame charts up on our screen, the monthly chart shows a nice TD9 count bottom, price above a green oscillator and change line out here. And that really suggests that price wants to go target that breakdown level, John. And that's at 15,798. That's to the upside. Your questions are to the downside. So we still have on that weekly chart, uh, weekly chart that 14,766 area. I would then add. So if price closed below your 14,870, your one standard deviation, of course, we know that'll change from time to time. Uh, if we take a look at uh, the 14,870 level and then 14,767, if price closed below those two areas, John, then what I would say is you could see a move. Well, then I would say you've got to move down to perhaps 13,204. And 13,204 at the present time is the current TD9 count breakout level. So that's how we look at this thing in progression. I see we're out of time here. Uh, hold on if you can, and I come back and answer any questions that you have about these NQ charts that we're looking at. Steve Rhodes with John and Philly. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. we got a mixed bag out here. Dow's off uh, 98, S&P's off to NASDAQ 100, which we're talking about is now 33 uh, points. We're on the line with John in Philly. And, and, John, the chart that I put up on my screen right now is the seasonal pattern for the NDX 100 for the last 37 years. The red vertical line represents where we're at today. Uh, we can see that on the bottom section, it shows uh, what the average typical daily returns are. Mondays and Fridays are struggles for the NASDAQ 100. So today, uh, with the NASDAQ being down 39, it's just following along with that pattern. Turns out that the only real troubled month over the last 37 years on average for the NASDAQ has been September. July is a pretty decent performing month. But this does indicate that from a seasonal perspective, John, price should move higher through about a week from today, July the 17th out there. Now, we know that uh, because of you, we know that the NASDAQ 100 on a daily basis formed a uh, TD sequential top. That's uh, You can sort of see bar number 13 or uh, label number 13 on my uh, screen out here. So, folks, that still remains in effect. We still have a top that's in place with a consolidating pattern that is out here. Um, uh, so I just wanted to throw that out to you as well, John. So to get back to answer your question, when I take a look at the charts, uh, the numbers that I'm looking at would be 14,969. You're looking at 14,870. So a close below that should bring the weekly oscillator and change line into play 14,767 or so. And a move below that would then bring into play the TD9 count breakout level on the daily time frame of 13,204. Uh, what questions, John, uh, what additional information can I provide to you or any observations that you might have? You've answered my uh, question completely, Steve. I thank you for that. Uh, I'm. Uh, I've got one follow-up question for you, unrelated. Yes. And uh, I, I'm going to use the principle that Tom O'Brien has uh, used on air for oh, nearly 20 years that I know of, and that is, um, uh, you have the right to ask for what you want. Yes. Uh, and of course, anybody whom you ask has the right to say yes or no. So. Uh, I've got a question for you today that I've never asked you. Okay. And uh, I, I respect your saying, John, I just choose not to answer because of, uh, oh, say, uh, out of respect for your client, your paying clients. But uh, yes. here's the question. Yes. Um, of all the things that you look at, and you look at very many, 
would you kindly share with us uh, two markets that you uh, can see the prospect for an intermediate term trend change, namely a market that's rising about to turn or has a prospect to turn into a declining market or vice versa, a currently declining market with a prospect to turn into a rising market. That's my question. Uh, If you choose to answer, I'm going to listen off air and thank you so much. Sure, you bet. John, thanks so much for calling, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. That was John in uh, Philly. So to answer John's question, let me do this here. And I can answer his question with regard to at least one market, and so I'm happy to do that. I just need to pull up the charts now. So what I want to look at, if you give me just a moment, here we go. See if I can pull this up. Okay, so we're gonna here. We're gonna have the daily, weekly, and monthly. I think I'm on the I'm on the white background charts. And what I'm gonna put in here is gold. So um, I think I can still put in the August contract and, and accomplish what I need to here. So let me see as this chart here populates. So what I'm really looking at, you know what? I'm gonna put up the continuous contract because that will really show what it is that I'm going to refer to. So let me get this to populate. And what I'm going to do here, folks, is I'm going to turn over to the monthly time frame chart here. And we're looking at gold. So when we take a look at this chart here, this tool, this tool shows us consecutive moves lower and consecutive moves higher. If we take a look at gold, this just takes us back to 2000, 1999 time frame. It's just the size of my screen, that's all. So let's not worry about where I'm pulling it back to. But we know that gold was on a big bull run back then. And if we take a look at each of the pullbacks here, consecutive pullbacks, look at how many two month, two bar, so it's two bars out here, two bar knee jerk reaction lows that formed. Nearly all of them. We do have a three month, uh, couple of three months. One was back in May of 2000. There was a three month uh, move that was back in July of 1999. But otherwise, on the run to the upside, what we saw in Goldilocks was a two month decline. So what I'm looking at right now, John, is the possibility of gold having formed a major bottom, a major bottom. No, do we have any confirmation of that? We do not. Absolutely, we do not. Why is Stevie looking at it? Well, combination of a couple of things. Number one, here we've got our two-month decline. That's just really the first thing. So we've got that two-month decline. While that two-month decline was taking place, let me see if I can get over now and take a look at the actual gold chart. So here's the ES Mini. So let's go ahead and move over to Goldilocks. Um So what you will see here, actually, this was probably not the chart that I wanted to do it, but I will. So the chart here would be for Goldilocks in the daily time frame, you've got that nice TD9 count bottom. Now that formed on June the 29th. Not until that low gets taken out, closed below, would I then change my view on your question with regard to an instrument that could take off in one direction or the other. So I think it is, is I believe that it's, a, or at least gold is one is one of the instruments that I'm taking a look at, uh, John. And it's really, uh, now the weekly chart, now there's a potential A to B equals CD to the downside that takes us to about the 1840 level. But because I've got an existing bottom here with regard to gold, and it's not just with regard to gold, and that's really what I was going to say here, um, might be this chart. So on a daily basis, so we got the monthly. So you understand what I'm looking at from a monthly standpoint, that the two week, the two bar knee jerk reactions out there. Then this is not it. Sorry, that's not it. So then when I take a look at what transpired in, is this it? Yeah. So now we've got the August contract up here and the left hand side for gold. The center is uh, silver and the right hand side is the GDX. So we know that Stevie was looking at that two-month decline. Now when I take a look at the daily time frame for these three instruments, which we all know are correlated with each other. You've got a TD9 count bottom in gold. Silver's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom and a wave number seven. And uh, the GDX also formed a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. So it's that area of the market, John, that I would say uh, perhaps provides the uh, biggest opportunity for each of us out there. So I hope that that helped you out. Really, there was, we were, we were looking at gold, silver, and the GDX mining area. So uh, you asked for two, there would basically be uh, three, but it'd be more gold than the GDX as opposed to silver. I'd have to go back and take a look at silver's chart to take a look at that two month uh, 
knee-jerk reactions out there. So hope that helped answer your question. And again, thanks so much for your call. We do have a question that came in by email. We can begin, at least start on that. This was from David H. And David is in uh, Panama City. And David wants to take a look at Amazon. He's got the 128 calls out here. And a concern right now for Amazon is going to be today's close. So you want to really keep a close Pay close attention to today's close. There's a new bullish structured profile, David, that formed out here a couple of days ago. The bottom of that profile is 127.57. We're trading below that right now. If we close below that, that could be signaling a further move lower, not a further move higher. We'll finish looking at Amazon for David in Panama City as soon as we get back to this break. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the stock charts here for Amazon. We know that it has uh, bullish structured profile support between 127.57 and 129. We know that volume, pretty good volume today so far, about 30 million shares in the first two hours of trading. So that equates to about 30, 60, 90, maybe about 100 million or so. Now, that 100 million, let's say, 
uh, is going into this wide ranging bar that was 90 million. So you're pulling back with similar looks like similar type volume. Don't know by day's end if this volume will will keep up or not, but similar type volume to that uh, move up on June 22nd. But the most important level for you to watch is going to be 127.57. Now, you need two consecutive closes below that, uh, David, in order to signal that, uh, OK, maybe there's a change in trend from a profile standpoint. And that change in trend, if we do get that, I would then move over to the weekly chart, and that 120.15 level is what pops out. You've got an oscillator and change sign that recently changed colors. It hasn't been tested. And you could get a TD9 count top that actually formed last week. We need the, to this week's bar must close. This for Amazon. This week's bar must close above 125.49 in order to generate a weekly TD9 count top. So you've got a rose momentum indicator top on the daily, price possibly busting through a support level, a potential TD9 count top on the weekly out there, and on the monthly chart, price is up towards resistance, the top of the monthly profile, 133.54. So what I'm not seeing here, even though we're in a, a little bit of a favorable seasonal cycle uh, for, the, um, uh, for the NDX 100, we covered that with John during that last segment out there, I'm not seeing your trade here. So you might be somewhere near your break-even uh, point, but you've got to decide what you want to do. I've just shared with you what the charts are communicating to us. Now, look, we talked about the two-bar knee-jerk reaction. We were looking at a monthly time frame chart when we took a look at Goldilocks. It applies to, quite frankly, everything. Figure two to four bars is your typical reaction to the upside or to the downside or certainly counter trend uh, type move here you can see that amazon since its lows has experienced a number of just simply two bar knee-jerk reaction lows so david you really need to wait till wednesday to see how this plays out to make a determination in other words today is bar number one you close below the bottom of the profile you probably get bar number two but is that the extent of the move or is this a change in trend now, I wish I had the answer to that question, because if I did, I would absolutely give it to you. All I can do is share with you the parameters, and then you can make the decisions from there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Amazon, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dan inside the Tigers, then we just happen to be talking, but I don't have that many. I do have a few requests out here. But he was in uh, ticker symbol AGEN, I believe from around the 140 level, right now trading out at about a buck seventy nine, And it looks like this wants – uh, this is a beautiful set of ch uh, charts out here to help us identify TD9 count patterns. Now, if you're not familiar with that pattern, familiarize yourself with it. Just subscribe to Mastery and Probability. There's a workshop up there. It's an hour workshop. You can gain access to it. You'll learn the pattern, and you'll be able to easily document your charts, at least your daily, weekly, and monthly charts out there. Turns out that with regard to Agonus Spartacus out there, you've got a TD9 count bottom on the daily. You've got a TD9 count that formed the bottom on the weekly, and on the monthly, you've got a TD9 count as well. So we know that this, uh, and when we take a look at the daily chart, this has a TD9 count top out there. So, Dano, you know, one pattern you want to be paying attention to, and everybody else who's now listening in is going to be the TD9 counts for A G E N. But what price should do, because it's above its green oscillator and change line, that tells us that we are in bullish conditions out here. Price should go target the level that it broke down from, and that's at a dollar eighty-five. And if you get above a dollar eighty-five, well, then you're up to buck ninety-four. Buck ninety-four is the center of its daily profile. And then above that, we're looking at 267, 213. And then above 213, you'd be looking at 267. So those are your moves to the upside out there, A-G-E-N, and uh, best of luck to you on that trade. Dizzle, inside the Tiger's Den, wants to take a look. Well, first, Dizzle says that uh, wants to take a look at the 30-year Treasury because of, uh, of the correlation that it has to uh, gold. We're just talking about gold. So let's go take a look at first. Let's go take a look at that correlation. So to do that, we've got to change panels. I did this during the break out there for you. So we'll go move from this uh, white panel set of charts to the black panel set of charts. And then we'll go to the actual correlation tool that Stevie has. So the top portion of this chart is Goldilocks. The center portion is the 30-year treasury. And the bottom portion is the five-day correlation. When bars are above zero, which most of them are, it tells us about a directional correlation between gold and the 30-year. Bars that are below zero, again, it's a five-day correlation, shows you about an inverse relationship. So if Dizzle was to ask the question, does there appear to be a directional correlation between a 30-year treasury and gold? We'd have to say the answer to that question is yes. 
Okay, so we've got that. But the other question was, well, what's the 30-year Treasury look like it's doing out there? So that's a great question. And for that, we need to switch panels as well. However, let me just check one thing. See if I've got that up here still. U.S. dollar. I don't think I've got the 30-year uh, gold. Not that I can't pull it up, but I'm not going to. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to my uh, white background set of charts out there. So give me a moment just to get that going here. And this way, to give you the outlook, the outlook, we need to take a look at longer term. So on a monthly basis, what we have out here is price trading with inside a descending price channel. And right now, on a monthly basis, the 30-year Treasury is testing the support of the bottom of its profile. Too early to call on that, but a close below that would suggest lower price. Turns out the weekly chart closed below the bottom of its profile and is also trading below the bottom or is trading below red oscillator and change line. So that suggests lower price. So the Monthly and the weekly are suggesting lower price, and that would suggest then, with regard to the uh, pattern that I took a look at in answering John's question, what's one area that we might consider having formed some type of major top or bottom, oh, that would say that I would be, have to be wrong on gold if it's going to move lower uh, because of the directional correlation between the 30-year out here. And when we take a look at the daily time frame out there, what you will see is Friday was bar number six. Today will become bar number seven or should become bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says on a daily basis, the 30-year Treasury could find support uh, could find a bottom, I should say, between tomorrow, Tuesday, and Thursday of this week. Well, if that's the case, we're really just testing profile support levels on the monthly, which doesn't end for quite some time out here, and the weekly, which did close one week last week below the bottom is profile, but could regain it this week. So, to sum up, what's the 30-year Treasury look like? I'd have to say at this stage, everything is signaling to move to the downside. That's a kind of a bullish indicator and what i mean by that is because the daily's got a td9 count bottom pattern that could actually form tomorrow confirm on wednesday and complete on thursday out there so dizzle i hope that helps you out with regard to the 30 year as well as gold thanks so much for taking the time to write in we've got another question two questions have come in by alton and uh, we'll get to uh, those as uh, well and alton is asking he's got a two-part question out here so the first question is i hope you're doing well i hope you have two uh, time for two questions where do you see the 10-year rate in 2024 and beyond wow I don't know that I can uh, do that, but what we can do when we get back from this breakout here is go take a look at the 10-year uh, uh, bond. We'll pull that up on my screen out there. And we'll at least take care, uh, we'll see, at least look at that. He also wants to take a look at Bank of America, BAC. Zero to a TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back up, folks. So we're going to take uh, we're going to start take a look at the uh, ten year Treasury, uh, the ten year note out here. And I can't pull up the uh, TNX because in order to do that, I've got to shut down a bunch of things and go to a different data feed out there. So we're going to look at the ten year Treasury uh, for you uh, first, Alton. So if I were to start with the longer term picture for you, because you're asking 2024, what's it look like? We're looking at the monthly time frame chart here. Now, in the monthly time frame chart, one would argue that there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that is also that has already begun, and that one to one would get us down to about the 101 level. So, the bigger picture right now, we have a TD nine count bottom that was uh, violated, that was negated, that was negated back in September of 2022. When that was negated, that also set up or triggered an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, we can see that we have a roach momentum indicator signal that's also been triggered on a monthly basis. If we were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So the monthly or larger term time frame, something that you are interested in, suggests that interest rates should continue to rise, whether it's 10 year or other. If we look at the weekly time frame chart now, the weekly time frame chart shows us really a couple of different things. Number one, when the uh, ten-year note had uh, our ten-year note had bottomed, it was back in October, October week of October 21st. Uh, back in 2022 and that was a uh, TD9 count bottom the bar following bar number nine it also then generated rose momentum indicator bottom that was confirmed the following week when there was a bullish reversal candle that formed out there that low is what's being tested as we speak so it's a bottom it's a TD9 count it's rose momentum indicator bottom and at the same time that is happening last week was bar number eight of a TD9 count so in this case here, a bullish reversal candle, just like in the last weekly TD9 count or Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, really the CRMI bottom, a bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom. Likewise, you might get a confirmed TD9 count bottom this week. In order to do that, price just needs to close below the close of bar number five out there. So at this stage here, that seems like a likely outcome. That closes at 113.01 out there. So that's something to be watching. Now, that's the weekly chart. So the weekly has the potential for a bottom pattern, and the daily today could confirm a buy the D point pattern. So there's an A to B equal C D. Let's pull this back here so that we can see this. Give me a moment. Okay. So here is the September contract for the uh, ten year note. You can see the A to B equals CD, the one-to-one -one has completed. What you need now is a bullish reversal candle to confirm its bottom. So we've got one picture for the monthly into 2024, which is really what you're asking. And that pattern still remains in effect out there that says lower price. However, that's a longer-term picture. We've got weekly, daily. We could even go intraday, you know, and try to get real play-by-play. -play. But on the daily time frame, it says we're about to get a timeout. The timeout says we're about to see 
rates begin to pull back a bit because a 10-year note, if we get that bullish reversal candle, we'll confirm a buy the D point pattern. Then what price should do is go target that oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is currently printing in the 111 on about a half uh, type area. And if price can overcome that, then we would be getting a signal on a daily basis of a change in trend. So Alton, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the 10-year note out there. Um, again, different time frames are going to provide us with different views. The larger time frame, you can then see what the play-by-play -play is going on in the weekly and the daily. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for taking the time to write. And you also want to take a look at Bank of America. And your question there was buy, sell, or hold. So let's go pull up those charts and see what they're communicating to you and I. Let's see if I can find them first. Here we go. We got Bank of America. Now, when I take a look at these charts here, Alton, got daily, weekly, and monthly. You know, what sticks out to me when I take a look at the daily is a consolidating pattern sideways. When we look at the weekly, we get to see it even more clear. That consolidation pattern nearly running from the bottom of the profile, but not exactly the bottom, up to the center line of that profile. That 29.52 is a real key level of resistance. Your question was buy, sell, or hold. Would we sell it here? Um, I don't have a signal necessarily to say sell right now. You've got this confirmed Roachman to indicator bottom. That confirmed on the trading day of March the 27th out there. That actually formed on March the 24th. Uh, you are trading with inside a profile or are you above it? Uh, you are above the top of the daily profile. So I would very very difficult for me to tell you to sell this position out there, but you're with inside a consolidation. So the best time to buy a consolidation, if you were interested in buying a consolidation, would be down towards the bottom of that pattern. In this case here, you're above the top of the profile. If price were able to get back inside that profile, that would mean a close below 28.43. Then I would say your 27.80 and 28.01 would be the area that you would be looking to add to a position. Of course, 27.39 looks mighty nice. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. So that's what I see when I take a look at Bank of America. Did we answer the question, buy, sell, or hold? I don't think we did, because it really depends. If you're in the position, you're in a consolidation, so you hold. Would you sell it? I think we did answer that, and I'd say no, we don't sell it. Would you buy it? If you were to buy it, buy it towards the bottom of the consolidation. So I guess we did really answer that question for Alton. That was the twofer. We also have a question here from uh, Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. So let's pull open their question which reads like this. Happy Marvelous Monday. Well, thank you. And same to you. XLE had an encouraging candle on Friday. Um, is the XLE about to rip to the top side? Uh, so uh, what, what Friday's candle did, if you take a look at these white background charts, what Friday's candle did and the encouragement that Hector was looking at is price closed above the top of a bearish structured daily profile. That bearish structure to the sell zone was between 8011 and 8058. Price closed above that. You're getting follow through today. Um, oh, that's not the top of the profile. That was the center of the bullish structured profile. My apology, Stevie Ziza. Uh, okay, sorry about that. So what that then tells us, it is still a promising candle because you're closed above the center of a bullish structured profile. You're having follow through today. So what this is really signaling to you, Hector, is a move to 8197. 8197 is the top of that daily profile. You can see on a weekly basis here, that price has found resistance once again at that weekly oscillator and change line. We've only seen two closes above the oscillator and change line on a weekly basis since January 27th out there. So we really need to see two consecutive closes above that line, which currently is printed at 81.30, 81.40 right now. But we don't really need to worry about that, that price point. But we do need to see two weekly consecutive closes above that, Hector. I believe it before we would get a signal that price is likely to move to the upside out there. So on a daily basis, yeah, encouraging candle on Friday, but it could run into resistance as it approaches that 81.97 level. If it can take that out, then we're looking to move to 83.02 and above that 84.72 and above that 85.94 and above that 89.14. All of that was courtesy of either the market profiles or the oscillator and change line. So Hector and Patty, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. I hope that that answered your question and um, that you guys have a, a marvelous Monday. Uh, no other questions by email. 
I'll have to go through during the break to see if there was anything else that came in through the uh, Tiger's Den. Kind of hard for me to manage uh, both of those. But what we can do is what can we do right now? Let's see. What do we want to go take a look at here with just a few seconds? I, I'm going to go. I'm going to vote for nothing. Uh, actually, the one thing I will do, I'll flip back to another screen out here. We'll take a look at Apple. That's for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. And what Apple's doing right now is pulling back into its bullish structured profile. And that zone of this bullish structured profile is between 185.96 and 187.85. We're trading right now at 187.87. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of our denners, uh, InnoVisual, uh, was kind enough to let us know that the uh, NASDAQ is going to do some rebalancing of seven, it looks like seven of the stocks out here. Uh, this article looks like it's coming from the IBD, perhaps. Um, and this is going to take place two weeks from today. On the uh, today's the 10th, on the 24th, and they will announce on the 14th. So that is Friday of this week. What that rebalancing is going to look like. In other words, what percentage will app? So the seven are Microsoft, Nvidia, Tesla, Google, Meta, and uh, Amazon out there. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to adjust Apple. Interesting. 
Is that two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, those are the seven out there because Meta, uh, Google, you've got uh, for uh, two different uh, instruments out there. So just something to uh, take uh, note of, and I'd watch those uh, seven instruments to see how they are trading out there and understand where support is at. For example, we can go take a look at Microsoft here real quickly, uh, see what screens are we on. Not on that. But with regard to Microsoft here, MSFT, let's uh, put up. The uh, daily and the uh, weekly set of uh, profiles out there. So in the case of uh, Microsoft, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Now, in order to generate an A to B equals CD pattern of the downside, price is going to need to take out the swing point from June 26. That swing point did 21 million shares. Well, you're already at 15 million shares, so you got to watch 328.49. If you get a close below 328.49, what that would then do is generate an A to B equals CD to the downside. And that A to B equals CD to the downside would give you a first price projection of 320.01 out there. On a weekly basis, uh, you are are with inside a uh, profile out there. So if we get that A to B equals CD to the downside, 320.01 is one target, but 306.96 is another target. In fact, the buy zone on a uh, weekly base for Microsoft is between 300.65 and 306.96 out there. So folks, uh, thanks so much for joining me on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Please stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. Have a great day. Take care.